Hi there, and welcome to another Portainer Members How To Webinar. My name is William, and today I'll be teaching you about registries and the Registry Manager extension. So, what are registries? Put simply, registries are a place to store container images. Most of you would have already seen the tutorial on the Docker website that asks you to run the Hello World image. This image is located on Docker Hub, a popular container registry owned and maintained by Docker. The brilliance of registries is that right away, a machine running Docker has access to them. If you have an image that is confidential in nature, you can just choose to make it private on Docker Hub. Or if you want to take this a step further, you can set up a private registry, which gives you much more control over your image. So, what are the common drawbacks of registries? Well, while Docker Hub is simple and good enough for most, those thinking to have more control over their production environments may set up what is known as a private registry. These registries could be created through a cloud provider such as Azure or self-hosted using GitLab. But these are oftentimes complex and hard to do right on your first attempt. Managing container images and the respective tags in a registry is done via command line. With Docker Hub, you can simply run docker push to make your image available on the Docker Hub registry. However, with private registries, you may need to learn the different tooling and commands from different cloud providers or services hosting your registry. Unless you live and breathe the command line, managing registries this way can get tedious and tiresome. The final drawback to registries, in my opinion, is troubleshooting them. Now we move on to our demo section of this webinar. First, I'm going to walk you through adding a Docker Hub account to Portainer. If you want to try run a private image in Portainer, it will fail. And that is because private images on Docker Hub require credentials. An example of this is this image here. If I try to go and deploy this private image, we should see the deployment fail. And this is because private images require credentials to pull and run. To solve this problem, we'll navigate to the registries view and I'll enter my credentials from Docker Hub. You should see the Docker Hub registry has been updated. If I go now and try to deploy this image again, we should see it succeed. This means we can now access private images on Docker Hub through the account that I added. Next we'll move on to setting up a registry and using it in Portainer. In the interest of time, I'm going to be setting up an insecure Docker registry through the use of app templates. So now we'll navigate to the app templates view, activate container templates, and select the registry one. I'll give it a name, and I'll specify a port to access it on. This is important because after a Docker restart, it might choose a, a different port. The next step is to tell the Docker daemon that we have an insecure registry. This is another important step. Because without doing this, Portainer will not be able to access this registry over HTTP. So here we want to note down the IP address of the registry container and the port. So now we'll move to the terminal and I'll open up this daemon file. As you can see, I've previously specified some registries in here. So we will specify our new registry, save and restart Docker. Once that's done, we'll move back over to Portainer. Moving back to Portainer, we want to now add our registry. Specify this IP address from before and the port. Now that it's added, we want to confirm that we can connect to it from Portainer. To do that, we'll move to the images view and we'll tag and push an image. For example, busy. And we can see now that an image was successfully pushed to the registry. So now we want to browse this registry. We'll move back to the registries view. And you'll notice that the browse button's grayed out because we haven't activated the license for the registry manager. To do that, we can simply click on this link, click act license key, and we'll paste in our license key. If it successfully activates, we should see a green notification in the top right. 
Now we should be able to browse our registry. Click browse, and here you have it. This is the image that I pushed before to the registry. Clicking on it, you'll be taken to another view, which has all of the functionality of the registry manager. You'll see information about the tags and images in here, the ability to add a tag and the image you can select, a list of tags in the repository, you can remove tags, and you can retag them. And I'm going to cover each of these sections in depth now. First up, I want to add a new tag. I'm going to specify a name like test, and choose the image, and the tag's been successfully added. I want to change this test tag now, and I want to call it test2. So I click the retag button, type in test2, and tick. Now you can see it's successfully renamed. And now I want to delete this new tag. Simply select it and click remove. Confirm, and there it's gone. So now I want to delete this repository so that my registry no longer has any images inside it. I'll simply click delete and confirm. And here there's no more images inside the registry. Simple as that, that's the registry manager extension. Now we'll move on to troubleshooting. So there are two areas where registries can fail in Portainer, pushing and pulling images and registry management. If pushing and pulling is not working, the first step is to make sure that when configuring the registry in Portainer, you provided the correct certificate files and also authentication if required. For this example, I'm going to use our private registry we have hosted on the cloud. So, if I browse to this image, which I have tagged with this registry, and try push, we'll see it fail because I didn't provide credentials. So, we'll go to the registry, and we'll click on it, enable authentication, and I'll put in my credentials. and click update the registry. Now we can see it was successfully updated and authentication is enabled. Next we'll go back to images, go back to this image and try push again. We should now see that it successfully pushes to the registry as it has. If at this stage it's still not working, another step we can take is to deploy a container to the same network as Portainer and try to ping the registry and this will help us to test the networking. I'll do this with the BusyBox container. So first I'll go to the containers view, add a container, call it busy, use the BusyBox image, and then this step's important. I'll enable interactive TTY and set an entry point of bin slash sh, so I have a shell in it. And now I'll deploy this. Now it's deployed, we can open the console here, select bin sh as the shell, and click connect. And now we can ping our registry. Which succeeds. If for whatever reason this fails, it means that something's up with DNS or networking, so it could be a lead. A common example of when this isn't working is when Portain is deployed in a swarm overlay network but the registry container isn't. If that happens, Portain cannot see the registry container. Next up, I want to look at troubleshooting the registry management configuration required screen. So if I go back to registries, and I remove this registry that we had used just before, go back to edit again, Add in my credentials. Now we click on Browse. We should see this screen here. So when encountering this screen, the most common test that people do is testing to see if they can push an image to a registry. That might succeed, but it doesn't guarantee that Portainer can reach the registry v2 API which is 
what it needs to reach for the registry manager extension to work. So if for example your secure registry requires TLS, you need to configure this in Portainer. So here we'll click configure this registry and enable TLS. And I don't actually have the certificates for this registry, so I'm going to enable skip. But this isn't recommended as it's unsecure. So now I have this enabled, I'll click test configuration and we should see that it succeeds. And now we have the option to save this for next time we go to browse. Once we've done this now, you can see that you have access to the registry and can use the registry manager extension. If you still can't get this to work, another way to test this is to fall back to the CLI and execute a kill request against the V2 API. Let me show you how. So going to the CLI, I'm going to enter this command, which will execute a curl request against the v2 API of this registry. If it's working correctly, we should get a response. And here, because I'm not using an auth token, we get an error saying it is unauthorized and authentication is required. Also, if you're using TLS, you have to specify your cert files.